During the time when Ibn Saud was uniting the kingdom that would become Saudi Arabia, a French adventurer by the name of Henri de Montfred was becoming well known on both sides of the Red Sea, crossing this sea on wooden sailing boats in pursuit of a variety of interests. The story of his extraordinary life is related in a number of biographies. As early as 1910, much has been reported about the business of pearling, and I followed these investigations with great interest. I found the Frazan Islands to be very pleasant. They consist of a long archipelago of some 200 islands lying along 250 kilometers of coral reef, which runs parallel to the coast. In his book, Sea Adventures, Henri de Montfred wrote about his time on the Farazan Islands. The Farazans were formed in tertiary seas and raised up when the Red Sea was cut off from the Indian Ocean. Much of the surface of the islands consists of old coral pavement. This pavement was formed between 120 to 170,000 years ago and much of it is still recognizable as coral. The remainder of the islands, where not surfaced by coralline limestone, are covered with beach sand. The archipelago consists of 129 islands with a combined landmass of 3,310 square kilometers. A wide island, or rather two islands separated by a narrow channel, Farazan Kebir and Farazan Zekir, may be considered the capital of this archipelago. Today, the largest island in the archipelago, Farazan Kabir, is serviced by a daily ferry. The human population has increased to more than 12,000, following the construction of a bridge linking the two main islands, and the building of power and desalination plants, a hospital, and roads, which give access to the main villages. Fishing and pearling have always been the main commercial activities, with some small-scale farming and livestock herding, using goats and camels brought over from the mainland. Sinkholes are natural traps for the rare rains and provide water for the villagers. Following periods of rule by Portuguese, Turkish and German interests, the islands eventually fell under Saudi Arabian jurisdiction. The population of the islands is therefore a mixture of people of Tihami, Yemeni and East African origins, either beside the shore to facilitate fishing or deeper inland to escape raiding by pirates. These people built villages using blocks of fossil reef limestone. Here, the water is very shallow, varying in depth between 3 and 5 meters. It is necessary to navigate by eye with a man on watch in the crow's nest. The very clear water sometimes makes it seem as if I was flying over a fantastic forest of multicolored corals. Coral reefs are the richest ecosystem in Saudi Arabia providing both shelter and food to a great range of bacterial and invertebrate life on which young fish and larger animals feed. The Farazan reefs are known as some of the best in the Red Sea. The fauna of the islands comprise passage migrant birds and the many types of seabirds that come ashore to lay their eggs in nests on the hot sands. The Caspian tern is one of the tern species breeding in the archipelago, found in the islands along with many other migrant or resident birds. Its large body and red bill make it easily recognizable. The richness and diversity of wildlife in the Farazan archipelago, on land and underwater, prompted the National Commission for Wildlife Conservation and Development to place the area under protection. A team of NCWCD rangers is based in Farazan port, working in close cooperation with the National Coast Guards. As an example of the Commission's activities, in 1991, in the presence of Professor Abdulaziz Abuzinada, Secretary General, Dr. Hani Tatwani, the coordinator of the Farazan Islands Protected Area, released a young gazelle that had been fitted with a radio transmitter to allow its movements to be followed. 
This gazelle joined a herd of more than a thousand mountain gazelles, surviving on the natural vegetation, despite competition with domestic livestock and feral donkeys. The osprey is a resident bird species, nesting close to the coasts and feeding from a variety of fish, including young sharks. With a total of 250 birds, including more than 80 pairs breeding here, the osprey population on Farazan Islands is the largest in the Middle East. The breeding season starts in November and lasts three months. The female lays two to three eggs. Spectacular mangroves grow in sheltered muddy creeks and rock channels protected from waves. Here, in the northeast of Farazan Kabir, the kandal species, as it is called in Arabic, is well represented, but is fairly rare elsewhere in the Red Sea. Mangrove trees require circulation water, growing in black mud in which hundreds of roots fix and feed. Hundreds of other roots have an aerial breathing role. Kandal species grow up to seven meters high. Mangrove swamps are very productive, supporting many species. A rich flora of tiny algae and a fauna of planktonic larvae. Crabs, snails, young shrimps and fish thrive among the roots. Kandal mangrove also supports a colony of pink-backed pelicans. More than 40 pairs breed there each year, nesting on the top of the trees, safe from ground predators such as mongooses and rats. Intense breeding activities take place in winter, but young pelicans may use the mangrove as a roosting site all year round. Pink-backed pelicans acquired their name from the color of the back of the adults. As other pelicans, the pouch under their beak allows them to transport their fish easily to the nest. Pelicans are often associated with fishermen. Other birds, however, are more difficult to see. The sooty falcon is a threatened species. In summer, about 30 of them come to the Farazans to breed. They also use mangrove sites, 
but nest on the ground under the tree's shelter. This pair laid three eggs, from which two chicks were produced, a quite regular common proportion in many bird species. Regular hunting of small songbirds by the parents ensures healthy growth of the sooty falcon chicks. The crab plover is a poorly known species whose populations range from the Indian Ocean and Arabian Gulf to the northern portions of the Red Sea coasts and islands, but which breed only around Arabia. Quite large numbers are present in the Farazans, especially at the beginning of summer, when they come together to breed in colonies. They nest on small and sandy islands on which they scrape holes in the sand to lay their eggs. High tide is approaching and birds concentrate on the last patches of uncovered sand. Spoonbills, tern and gulls mix together along with smaller shorebirds. But as the dry spots dwindle, the birds must take to the wing. Constantly beaten by the waves, the ancient coral reef coasts have acquired their characteristic shape. Over the reefs, algae often concentrate at the surface and become natural nurseries for larvae and young fish, feeding on the plankton that gathers there. This forms one end of a food chain, which is followed by larger fish, such as these groups of fusiliers and black surgeon fish, and then by predators such as jacks, which are in turn appreciated by Farazan's fishermen. More than 230 species of fish live around Farazan Islands. The white tip reef shark is a common large predator on the reef. These small red fish are antheus. They feed from only one patch of coral on which they stay for life. Three pennant fish move elegantly past. The two barred is the only species of anemone fish seen in the Red Sea. Damselfish, such as these blue-green chromins, are seen in large numbers, living, feeding, and protecting themselves on the reef.
The spadefish, often simply called by its Latin name platax, is found alone or in small groups. It can reach up to 50 centimeters in size. Black spotted grunts, or sweet lips, live in groups and are one of the most common species on the reef. Several species of grouper are present. The male, here at the front, is much smaller than the female, which in some species can grow up to two meters in length. The large and majestic manta ray is a harmless plankton feeder, spending most of its time close to the surface, filtering the turbid food-rich water. As with sharks, rays are often seen accompanied by one or two remoras, which attach themselves using a sucker pad on their heads and feed on the scraps left by their host. In the late afternoon, while the tide slowly ebbs, shorebirds become more active. Among the crab plovers, the redshanks are looking for mudworms. Redshanks are winter visitors, using Farazan Islands as a stopover on their way to Turkey and Iran, where they breed in summer. Such migrant shorebirds may stay here for a few weeks to replenish energy reserves, change plumage and prepare to continue to travel to northern breeding grounds. The bar-tailed godwit is another of these migrants. This one has already acquired its dark-coloured plumage, while another still wears its winter plumage. Here also two curlew sandpipers in winter and in summer plumage. The western reef heron and the goliath heron are two resident species. The goliath is the largest bird species on the Farasans. Shorebirds such as this crab plover commonly bathe to remove parasites and to keep feathers in good condition. Spoonbills are also resident. The orange feathers on their neck indicate that they are ready to mate. Green turtles, endangered throughout much of the world, are still common in the Farazans. As edible animals, they were hunted until recent times. But today, turtle hunting is strictly prohibited within the protected area. Green turtles live at sea, feed on seagrass and algae, and mate just offshore. They nest on isolated islands on beaches that have firm deep sand. The females lay in both winter and summer, producing several clutches, each with an average of 70 eggs.
After laying is completed, the female shovels the sand back over the eggs, smoothing it with the belly of her shell. The exhausted creature finally returns to sea. Unfortunately, nesting turtles leave a distinctive trail behind them, making it easy for fishermen to find and illegally collect the eggs for food or for sale. This quick little Kentish blubber was hatched only a few days ago here on this sandy beach. Its mother is not far away, feeding on the mudflat temporarily uncovered during morning's low tide. Kentish blubbers are resident on the Farazans. Just a bit further on, a small group of greater flamingos is bathing the Goliath heron seems to reign serenely over this bird kingdom. The great sand plover, much larger than the Kentish plover, is a winter visitor only. This agitated western reef heron tries to catch small fish in the shallow water. Turnstones usually stay in groups, even when preening. The ringed plover will soon migrate to breeding grounds in the high Arctic. It is due to the peace and quiet that reigns over the Frazan archipelago that the water maintains the beautiful clarity that is so important to the work of the divers. In these islands, thousands of local boats fish for both pearl and mother of pearl. The sale of these products in Aden, Bombay and Massawa brings in around 2 million pounds sterling annually. ومن إنتاج أيضا محلي من جزر فرسان التابعة للمحافظة واستخدام اللؤلؤ إخراجه من البحر طبعا بالعادة القديمة اللي هي مثلا الدنجيل وال. Ali Asiri, chief ranger of the Farazan Islands protected area, is meeting Mohammed Bel Os, who might be the last pearl merchant in the Red Sea and who still remembers the ways of the old pearling tradition. فهو يبتاع بسعر الشو مثلا بعضه هذا يمسك في الشو ألف ريال وبعضه هذا مثلا يبتاع بالمثقال مثلا المثقال إشوال بشبعمية ريال أو كذا وأيضا هذا نفس الشيء لأنه ما نقينا يطل مكان زي ما تشاهد ال ودنا أنا شايف هنا ميزان نعم. أنا ما أني عارف بالضبط وش مهمة الميزان هذا مثلا هذا الوزن اللولو أو الوزن مثلا للبيع أو هذا الميزان طبعا على كل حال هو الميزان اللي هو طبعا هذا الميزان سلمك الله 
يستخدم لوزن اللؤلؤ نعم. فعلى سبيل المثال هذه اللي هي القطعة احنا نسميها مثلا قطعة ونسميها كذا نعم. مثلا هذه منها خمسة مثاقيل وهذه مثلا اثنين مثاقيل مثقالين كما نقولها وهذه ايضا مثقالين وهذا مثقال نعم. وهذا نص مثقال وهذا ربع مثقال فال احنا نجيب اللؤلؤ كمان كذا اوريك طريقة نعم. في سكينة اظنها موجودة عندي هناك نعم. شايف نعم اللي مثلا هي اللي, هي اللي هي هذه هذا سكين احنا نسميها والبعض نعم. يسموها مجرفة نعم. فيكون الوزن بهذه الطريقة تقريبا هذه أربعة مثاقيل وكل ما Despite a long history of pearling activities in the area, Muhammad realizes well that today the traditions are in danger of being lost. Very few people are now involved in the harvest of pearls, since most of the young people find employment in other sectors. Only the older men, 50 and 60 years of age, still work in the pearling industry. At the time when Henri de Montfray was trying to establish a trade in pearls, diving teams went out for days at a time on sailboats that they used to call Sambuk. After a day of diving to collect the oysters, they would land on small islands such as this one, where they checked each shell before finally eating and resting. <laughs> صنع الله الذي أتقن كل شيء Nowadays, artisanal fishing is usually the work of individuals who go out for between one day to one week at a time in a motorized boat filled with ice. The fisherman camps on one of the outer islands in a family hut built from driftwood and uses baited hooks on hand lines, sometimes working at night. But locals are no longer the only fishermen. Foreign laborers such as these, using nets, work for the Saudi fisheries company and for commercial investors based at Jizan on the mainland. Sooty gulls, found only in the northwest Indian Ocean, are common on the Farazans, along with the white-eyed gull, a Red Sea endemic, slender-billed gull, and other species. In spring, schools of hundreds of long-nosed parrotfish locally known as Harid, aggregate during one week in the shallow waters of a sheltered bay of Farazan Kabir. The reason for this extraordinary migration remains unclear, but for the islanders, this is the occasion of a unique annual festival, when large numbers of fish can easily be caught in hand nets. <laughs> Most of the surface of the Farazans is a desert of fossil limestone. Humidity is high, but rainfall is rare. Constant winds blow all year, and the ground is subject to continuous grazing by domestic, feral, and wild animals. However, despite this aridity, the vegetation remains healthy. The flora is Sudanese type, comprising 180 plant species, including more than 10 that are endemic to the Farazan Islands, being found only there. The mountain gazelle, or Idmi, of the Farazans are the largest wild population in Arabia and are believed, on the basis of differences in dentition, to be a separate subspecies. They also look more reddish buff in color compared to their continental neighbors. Protection of the gazelles was a major reason for the designation of the islands as a protected area by the NCWCD. Since 1989, rangers and scientists have monitored the population of more than a thousand individuals, distributed mostly on Farazan Kabir. Males have long horns, 
females short ones. Their main habitat is broken coral ridge, which offers both food and bedding sites under ledges, and acacia groves where they browse on shoots of grasses, flowers and pods. The relative inaccessibility of such sites combines with the reliable year-round food supply, only limited competition from agriculture and livestock, and the past protection by the islanders to ensure the continued survival of the gazelles. These two young males will soon disperse to find separate territories. Limited hunting for meat by islanders is almost a traditional right, but it is known that tourists have chased gazelles by car. In the 1980s, outsiders paid for hundreds of gazelles to be caught for sale on the mainland. Many animals were killed and the population was almost lost. However, hunting and export of gazelles is now prohibited by the NCWCD and the population is considered healthy. Idmi gazelles are agile and graceful and blend well with the coral rock. Egyptian vultures are sedentary birds in Arabia. About 65 pairs are estimated to breed on the Farazan Islands. They nest in recesses of the highest cliffs. Egyptian vultures are often seen scavenging in garbage dumps. Juveniles still wear a dark and dirty looking plumage, while adults display orange colored feathers on their heads and necks, a feature specific to the islands. Such color variation is usually related to diet. On osprey nests, chicks are much older now, but still unable to fly, dependent on parents that will continue to feed them until they fledge. Young sooty falcons stay for weeks near the nest after fledging. Their plumage still looks very different from that of the adults. Hunting continues to be a duty of the parents, which bring prey for the chicks to pull apart and eat. forest of mangrove trees, juvenile pink-backed pelicans feel at home while adults spend most of the time fishing at sea. Young pelicans haven't yet acquired the light grey colour of the adults but still wear brownish feathers. However their body, beak and wings are well developed now and they are able to practice flying over the candal mangroves, stretching their long wings into the sea breezes.
The Western Reef Heron is common throughout the Red Sea and the Arabian Gulf, but is an interesting species as it has extreme color dimorphism and can either be dark gray or pure white. The curlew sandpiper continues to feed on algae on the wet sand. The variation in the size and shape of the bills of shorebirds allows them to feed at different levels in the mudflat, reducing competition between them. The turnstone might search for food under algae or small stones. The red shank, with its sharp beak, catches small crustaceans moving in the dying waves, while this sandaling constantly pecks the ground like a power hammer. The bar-tailed godwit can reach much deeper into the mud thanks to a much longer bill. This solitary grey plover, still in winter plumage, will be transformed into contrast black, silver and white colours. Male summer plumage serves to attract a mate and also play an important role of camouflage during the breeding season. The lesser crested terns are colonial seabirds nesting in the area along with swift, bridled, white-cheeked and saunders terns. The curlew, with its long bill, is the largest shorebird on the beach. Beside the common oyster catcher, two small saunders terns are courting, the male displaying a small fish in its bill. A yellow-legged gull is fighting with the flatfish it has just caught. The smaller crab plover seems to be very interested in the fish also. A swift tern, the biggest tern species after the Caspian, is bathing and drying in the air. indicated by its name, the crab plover feeds on small crabs and crustaceans. It's an attentive and swift hunter with a powerful beak. After two months of incubation in the beach sand, the little green turtles are hatching. This happens at night, when the temperatures are cooler and there are few aerial predators.
In groups of 10, the young turtles are emerging simultaneously from the sand. They look clumsy as they run instinctively towards the water, their natural element. Actually, it is the light which attracts them, and at night this means the reflection of the moon on the sea. But they would be very easy to catch by humans equipped with lamps. Swimming is not a problem, and water seems much more pleasant than the rough, dry, sandy ground. But they must take care. The sea hides many dangers for such little creatures. Better to swim fast and avoid unpleasant encounters. The grey reef shark could easily swallow a baby turtle in a single bite. This is one of the three shark species living on the reef, along with the white tip and the black tip sharks. These sharks calmly patrol their territories along the reefs. Barracudas are represented mainly by two species. The great barracuda, which can reach nearly two meters, is a solitary predator. Whereas the smaller pick-handle barracuda swims in large shoals during the day after a night of lone hunting. Big-eyed trevallies belong to the large Karangidae fish family, or jacks, as they are generally called. Jacks live in shoals of varying sizes, hunting by both day and night. They must remain constantly in motion, otherwise they would sink since their swim bladder is atrophied or missing. the inoffensive square tail grouper brings us to the bottom. Stingrays lie on the seabed, moving with a wave-like motion when disturbed. In contrast, the spotted eagle ray has fins which move more like wings. The eagle ray, as with its cousin the manta, prefers more open water. Two-bar anemone fish live peacefully on their soft coral bed. The female is larger than the male, but if she disappears, the male is able to replace her, growing in size. This ability to change sex is quite common in fishes. The calm and placid lionfish is a dangerous prey for predators as its long fins are poisoned.
the emperor angelfish appreciate the protection provided by a table coral. Over the surface, seabirds began their daily fishing party. These are brown boobies with their long body, sharp bill and angular wings, especially designed for these impressive aerobatics. Parazan Archipelago, as a strategic zone in the Red Sea for the kingdom, is under the control of the Ministry of Defence and therefore numbers of visitors have always been well regulated. The conservation of the island's wildlife and their habitats is facilitated by the presence of NCWCD rangers. Following government decisions to open up the area for increased domestic tourism, it is hoped that the building of any new structures to welcome visitors from the mainland will be done with care for the natural environment. The wild beauty and natural resources of the Farazans have, after all, always been the main attraction for human visitors to these islands.